Hello boyos, Rich Boy J here back with another video, and today we're going to talk about my top 10 list for the 25th anniversary LEGO Star Wars figures. Now if the rumors are true, LEGO has something truly special planned for us next year. What they basically are going to be doing is including a special minifigure in all of the sets next year. So regardless of what it is, we'll get something special thrown into the set. Right now the rumors are saying that we're going to see a Fives minifigure as well as a Darth Malak minifigure, which as a KOTOR fan is pretty huge news but I went ahead and I thought okay we don't yet know all the figures that are going to be thrown into sets so why not do a little bit of a like wish list so to speak to see which many figures Lego could throw into these sets that would make the 25th anniversary absolutely epic. Before we get to the list though I did want to give some audible mentions just a few figures that didn't quite make the list but that I did think would be worth stating here just to give us a little bit of excitement and potentially hope. The first audible mention is Jocasta New. I feel like this is a character that whether it be Clone Wars or just from you know the films that we all are kind of familiar with but when it comes to including her in the set contextually there just aren't a lot of options to include her in a play set however something like this where it's just another figure thrown on top of a set is really the perfect opportunity to finally give us our Jedi librarian the next honorable mention is literally a force ghost anything I honestly have PTSD when thinking about whether or not Lego is ever going to make a force ghost and this comes from back in those days when we would be predicting oh what is the made the fourth figure going to be and I feel like force ghosts were always the ones that were floated but since it's been so long and we haven't gotten an inkling of any any type of force ghost I'm honestly just kind of over it and at this point I'm not even sure if it'll ever happen but if it did I think that it would be an awesome choice for one of these 25th anniversary figures. Then my final honorable mention is a The Last Jedi Leia figure. Um, basically the newest version of Leia that we received was the one from The Force Awakens in her gas station attendant outfit. And that was cool and all, but I definitely think it's worth it for us to get a Last Jedi version of Leia. I felt that her outfit in that movie was really cool, really iconic looking, uh, specifically when she's on crate, like that scene of her just kind of staring out into the distance as the door closes. That always stick with me, as well as her final moments with Luke. I think that this would be a great figure for um, Lego to do, and also kind of one of those that maybe contextually you don't have a lot of opportunities to throw her into a playset, but for something like this, with like a one-off figure in a set, I think it makes a lot of sense. But now that we got those out of the way, let's move on to the actual list. Number 10 on my list is going to be Mara Jade. Anyone who knows me uh, will instantly realize this is a weird choice for me to be making, but I think that there is enough of like an EU cult following out there and probably still people to this day who think Luke should have had a girlfriend or wife or whatever they were and um, I mean she's a cool enough looking character as well and I think like this for sure airs on the side of like the more wacky type minifigures that Lego could do but I think if they really want to open up the playbook and do something totally unprecedented I think Mari Jade would be a really fun kind of quirky minifigure to throw in for the 25th anniversary figures. Number nine on my list is going to be Anakin from the 2D Clone Wars but specifically the one with the gang tats. That's right. Shirtless Anakin would be cool. Shirtless Anakin with gang tats would be even better. Now they're not actually gang tats. Um, there's like these like leech things that kind of crawl over him and leave ink marks on his chest and his face. And uh, he also has like sporting that gold arm too. So if they wanted to give him arm printing for like the bottom half of his arm, I think that would be really sweet. Um, I think this would just be a really cool, neat looking figure. Once again, kind of something slightly unprecedented. I mean, they've done set, at least one set from the 2D Clone Wars before. So it's not like it would be totally out of left field, but I think if they kind of want to continue with that trend of throwing figures in here that we really <laughs> would not have a context to get otherwise, I think this one would be um, a unique one as well as a really cool looking one. Number eight on the list is going to be my guy, Two Tubes. He has to be one of the cooler looking background characters that we see in Rogue One. And I definitely think he deserved a minifigure. I mean, he needed a minifigure back when we got the Rogue One sets. That obviously didn't happen. And we haven't gotten any more Rogue One sets since then. But I think that this would be a really cool opportunity to throw in a very unique looking alien. Um, when it comes to character design, he really stuck out to me in that movie. Number seven on the list is George Lucas. Because why the heck not? We of course had that, I don't know, like leaked weird prototype George Lucas um, from back in the day. But I think if they really wanted to do something cool and special, especially for an anniversary year, why not make a George Lucas minifigure to throw into these sets? I mean, seriously, think about all the iconic scenes you could recreate with a George Lucas minifigure. The gun this Clone War has. Oh, come on, guys! <laughs> R4 is really an R2 painted red, isn't it? Careful. 
what you're saying about R4 because you can get bopped on the head real quick. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to keep doing this, guys. You know, there's $200 of signature, so why don't you just go out and get a job? I think it feels a little pretty. That's what I mean. It looks a little, it needs to be loosened up a little bit. Kind of. Yeah. We can't let it be cute. It's got to look rugged. To get out of this office right now. I'm sorry, Zed. No it's, way. You brought no it on way. Zed, I got your voucher. <laughs> out! Oh, sorry. We'll have him, like, burned and we'll I don't even know who that guy is. You know why I have money and you don't have money? Okay. It's because instead of spending my time doing autographs, I spent my time making movies. That's not okay. I can't make movies, though. Sure you can. Oh, I'm starting out just like you. I just said, I, I, I had nothing when I started. They're dissolving this thing in a molten salt and they're doing electrochemistry on it. Why don't they call it more salt? They want no association. Number six on the list is going to be Dryden Voss from Solo, A Star Wars Story. Now, I give Lego a little bit of leeway here. If you don't know the story, originally Dryden Voss's character design was supposed to be one of the big monkey guys that acts uh, as his bodyguard in the film. And eventually his design was changed to be uh, the Paul Bedney character that we ended up getting. As such, the Dragon Boss that Lego made was the big monkey. That was going to be his character, uh, but I guess it was just too late in production to make the actual Dragon Boss. So that's why we ended up getting his bodyguards, but not an actual Dragon Boss minifigure. Well, now is the chance for Lego to make up for it. Uh, Dragon Boss is the main villain of the movie, and at this point, he's like the only like main villain of a Star Wars property that we just don't have a minifig for. Maybe other than, I guess, Zombie Palpatine. So, um, pretty big glaring omission from the Lego minifigures sphere when it comes to Star Wars. And he definitely needs to get a minifigure. There's just, there's no, there's no reason for him not to. And speaking of Palpatine, number five on my list is going to be Emperor Palpatine from Revenge of the Sith. Uh, I specifically would love to see the version of him at the end of the movie. This is a minifigure that we've not yet gotten up until this point. We got pretty close with the Palpatine that we got in the Palpatine's arrest set, but he's still not exactly this version. And I think that like he's a really big part of the end of Revenge of the Sith. In terms of importance, we definitely like deserve a figure like that. It feels weird to say deserve. We're not entitled to it by any means. But from, I guess, a, a story um, completionist perspective, he's certainly integral enough to the story of Revenge of the Sith that he deserves a minifigure. And I just think he would look really cool. Number four on the list is Captain Athano. Yes, the Red Raider, the red guy that Finn talks to in Maz's castle. Awesome character design once again. Like it kind of sucks that he looked so cool in the movie, yet we have such little merchandise of him. I, I totally feel like if we were back in the old days of Star Wars, someone would totally be writing lore about a planet full of Captain Athenos in various colors. And then he would proceed to show up in multiple shows and movies afterward. Jokes aside, I'm a really big fan of this character design and um, a mini figure of him would just look really cool. Number three on the list is probably the one that makes the least amount of sense to include in this context, but it is one that we are in such dire need of that I had to throw her on this list anyways, and that is Zamwazel. Now obviously, if Lego wanted, there is a very clear, obvious, like, play set that they could be doing in an updated version of that we could get a Zamwazel minifigure. That hasn't happened in so long that, I mean, it clearly just isn't a big priority, which is really weird because, like, the concept of that scene lends itself so well to play sets. I kind of feel it's the same reason we get so many Luke's land speeders. I feel like they could easily be pumping out the speeder chase set, you know, every three or five years if they really wanted. But that's not the case. So if we're still going to be <laughs> in this position where the newest Zamboselle figure is the original one from 2002, where she's sporting the yellow face, I think it's definitely the case that we need a new Sam Wazell minifigure, and why not make her an anniversary figure? Number two on the list is literally any Padme figure. Like I talked about earlier, how not having a Dryden Boss figure was a big glaring omission, where he's like the only main villain of a Star Wars property or film that we just don't have. Well, I'd say Padme is super disrespected in that same regard in regards to her minifigure representation. When you look at the prequels, I mean, presentation-wise, she's kind of supposed to be up there as one of the big three. You know, in the original movie, we had Luke, Han, and Leia. Well, in the prequels, it was supposed to be Obi-Wan, Anakin, Padme. 
but for whatever reason, LEGO just didn't really give her good treatment when it came to minifigures. For episode one, things are okay. You know, we have her in her like young, handmaiden decoy outfit from Tatooine, as well as a quaint Amidala figure, which is fantastic, like top-notch figure. But with episode two, it took them basically like, like 11 years to make a Padme of any version from that movie. And even up until this point, we have not gotten a single Padme from anything in episode three. So this being the case, like we got a lot of Padme to fill in. She wears more outfits than anybody yet has the, like the least amount of minifigures when it comes to the main character. So we gotta catch up to that somehow. So if they wanna do some Padme minifigures, some suggestions I have, I think that like the black outfit Queen Amidala would actually be really cool. Um, I also think that the pregnant version of her for episode three is a pretty iconic look and I think that would be a lot of fun. Or if they don't wanna go that way, they could go with um, maybe George Lucas's favorite outfit for Padme. And that's not a joke. George Lucas literally designed that outfit. And number one on the list might be weird for some, but it's super important for me. And that is an episode one C-3PO. Why do I want an episode one C-3PO? Well, it might surprise a lot of you that up until this point, we have not gotten a C-3PO minifigure in any prequel context whatsoever which is kind of crazy. I know he's not like a central part to those movies like he was in the original trilogy, but the fact that we've still never gotten him in a prequel set whatsoever, which means that we've not gotten an episode one C-3PO and we've not gotten an episode two C-3PO. And if you want to get really technical, we've still never gotten an updated episode three C-3PO where he doesn't have his silver leg. Out of all the prequel variants, I feel like the episode one version is the most unique looking one. Like if you really want it, there are options that you could use for the episode two C-3PO, like the Q-3PO that came out and that advent calendar. But the episode one version is just so unique. And honestly, I'm not even sure how they would pull it off if they would try to give him like a battle droid box Body or if they still want to like give him like a actual mini big torso I don't know there's options but I think he has such a unique and cool um, appearance in this movie that if they wanted to throw this figure in somewhere because once again not really an obvious playset choice to include this minifigure unless maybe you want to throw him in the pod race but if that's not going to be the case I think this is an excellent opportunity for us to finally get in episode one C-3PO. But that's gonna finish up my list, guys. I'd love to know not only what do you think about it, but also what are some cool minifigures that you wanna see as add-ons to sets for the 25th anniversary next year. That's gonna finish up the video, though. If you like what I do, go ahead and support the channel by hitting the like button, support the channel by smashing that subscribe button, and I'll be back again very soon.